Hey, Professor Stuckler here. One of the questions that I get asked all the time by students and one that causes so much confusion yet is so critically important is, what is the gap? How do I know what my gap is? How do I find it? See, so many students I see who don't have a clear gap find themselves suffering all kinds of symptoms of that lack of clarity, going in circles, moving backwards, going forwards, feeling stuck, feeling lost, like they don't have a roadmap, or even struggling down the road, not being able to publish their papers after trying numerous times. If any of this sounds like you, it could be a sign that you just haven't clearly identified your gap. I'd say about 90% of the success of your paper ultimately is going to stem from your ability to identify a major gap in your field of study, in your field of research, and then appropriately address it. So really take the time to get this right. And if you don't have this gap identified, frankly, as I tell all the students I work with, you have no business going on doing the research or trying to do any kind of analysis, or even really any, any major data collection at this point, because you, you just risk wasting tremendous amounts of time and energy. So what do I mean by this gap? Basically, the gap is this idea of missingness. There's something missing in your field. There's something missing from what everybody else has done before. And you think there's this big gaping hole that later you're going to make the case for how you're going to try to address and plug this gap because it's critical. Imagine it's like in your field, you're trying to build this bridge to help people get to the other side on this path and quest to knowledge. But there's this big chasm. And until you fill this chasm, you're not going to have a complete bridge. And so these gaps can take different shapes, forms, and they can be different sizes. I mean, ideally for you, you want there to be a big gap that you can plug quite easily. That would be kind of your perfect universe in the land of our hunt for gaps in research. So these gaps take various forms. And you know, when you've worked on a lot of research projects, you start to kind of sniff out gaps quite quickly. I'd say in working with our students, that's probably one of the areas where I add personally some of the most value to the work that they do. It's kind of helping them hone in on a laser beam to what the gap is in their field, and in so doing, to find a winning topic and method for addressing it in a short period of time. And it's something that a lot of students just get by virtue of having a really close mentor. If somebody's at right at the center of their field, kind of by default, by being connected connected and being in that network, you're going to get plugged into gaps. As a graduate student, I never had any training on finding a gap. I just was fortunate to be in the right circles. It was only later on in my career that I saw so many students struggling with this gap that I realized, actually, we need some bespoke training on this because not everybody is so fortunate to have had top Ivy League education where this is just kind of laid out on a silver platter for them. That's what this channel is all about and that's what I'm here to help with. So having seen lots of gaps in my decades of experience working with students, there's several kinds that you can kind of just go and be like, okay, I'm going to pluck these gaps off the shelf and take a look at those. And so maybe there's studies saying, well, you know, I see lots of studies in these countries and maybe high income countries, but nothing's been done in developing countries. And I want to kind of focus like a laser beam on does this matter for developing countries? It's just one example. There are many types of geographic gaps that you could look at and think about. I often find that these aren't the most winning of gaps because they're just kind of let's extend something that's already been done. But they are something that's off the shelf and can be straightforward. And as you know, I'm a big advocate of for many of you, especially the stage you're at, just trying to finish. So that can be something easy to turn to. So that's one kind of gap. Another gap that I often see that can be more powerful is a theoretical or a conceptual gap. Here you have much more promise. And personally, I've tapped a lot of these gaps by being very interdisciplinary in the work that I've done. So it might be you say, okay, here I see in sociology or political science, there's some tools that the economists have not yet used. I'm going to lift those and move them over there. Or the same thing I've seen in in medicine, there are some commonplace tools that maybe haven't been applied in, in other adjacent fields where they could have great relevance to bear. So when that happens, I can look and say, oh, there's this big conversation going on over here. Nobody's thought about it in quite this way. And so I'm going to try to bring these new tools. That's a big gap. I'm going to try to complete that bridge by bringing those new ways of thinking to this area. So you can have that kind of theoretical gap that you can plug. Another related to this can also be methodological. Maybe you found that a lot of studies have used quantitative methods, but you think they're missing something because they haven't used thicker, richer, qualitative methods to go deeper, or maybe the other way around. So another type of gap is a methodological gap. That can be a very common one. Now, there's a temptation to say, well, there's gap one, gap two, gap three, 20,000 gaps. No, I want you to focus on one big gap. Get that clear, get that straight, maybe make a list of all the gaps that you see, focus on the big one. Then you can focus on maybe, well, there's also the second 
second order, third order, other related gaps, but try to find the biggest one that you can find and then go down the process of making sure you've got tools, the analysis that can actually plug that gap. It might be you find a gap. This is an amazing gap. I really can't wait to work in this, but it's going to take you a lifetime to solve it. That's no good. Keep that though in the back of your mind. You know, what I used to do as a grad student is I, I kind of had I, my notebook and handy list of, of research ideas that came from me detecting. It's like a gap hunter. I was like sniffing around for gaps and I, I would jot them in my notebook and several of them I couldn't get to at the time, but I came back to later. So keep that ideas book. You know, many greats do this. I know Stephen King, when he got ideas for books and movies, he kept a dream book next to his bed. I used to keep one next to my bed as well. Don't, don't ask me why I was dreaming about research, but I, I want you to uh, <laughs> keep, keep track of those ideas and really stay tuned and already start thinking as you read papers, as you do your literature review to find that gap. Because again, if you don't have this clearly defined, you are setting yourself up for unnecessary hardship, frustration as a grad student, feeling misunderstood by your supervisors and colleagues, and getting stuck. And I don't want that to happen to you. So guys, let me know how you get on with these tips. If you're looking for more direct support, maybe in identifying your gaps or going all the way through to publishing in high impact journals, I encourage you to get in touch. Join my 100% free Facebook group, Fast Track Grad, where we can be directly in contact in the DMs, and we will connect you to some of the right resources just for you at the stage of research you're at, all the way from never having started through to even being a full professor like me. See you in the next video.